Okay, sorry my question got cut off there by the screen recorder that will only let me record 15 minutes at a time. Um, as I was saying, I don't know how many of you are hunters or otherwise have an interest in wildlife biology, um, but antlers are the fastest growing bone that isn't cancerous or prenatal. And antlers on deer can grow at a rate up to seven times that of skeletal bone growth. Um, so. Deer and elk and moose, they're all um, antler growing animals. Of course, most of these animals, only the males have antlers. The exception to that would be caribou and reindeer, which the females also have antlers, but they're much smaller than the males. Um, I'm from Oregon, and this is an example of an Oregon Cascade blacktail deer. Um, non-typical antler formation there. Um, here's an example of some mule deer in eastern Montana. And then these are some shed deer antlers I found um, near my house, or near my parents' house in Oregon. Um, so deer and elk and moose, all of them shed their antlers annually. So every spring, um, late winter through early spring, the antlers are going to fall off. Um, due to dropping testosterone levels, and um, that is triggered by the end of the breeding period, or rut, in the male deer. So every single year, these deer will regrow antlers. Um, so the antlers drop off, and soon after that, the new antlers start growing. While they're growing, they're covered in this material called velvet, which is just an extension of the skin. It carries the blood supply to that growing bone material. Um, once the rut starts and testosterone levels rise, that velvet hardens and the blood supply dries up. Then the deer will rub off the velvet from its antlers, and that's what you see here. Um, so this natural dark color here is gained by um, rubbing that that velvet off and acquiring color from the trees and shrubs um, that they are polishing their antlers on. So this is a cool example of mitosis, very fast growth rate um, within these structures here. Okay, um, there's a cool video here. It's about six minutes long. I'm not going to go through it now, um, but just so you know, you can go into the PowerPoint file and watch this. This is just going to be a supplementary overview of mitosis. Okay, a little bit more on chromosomes. So every one of your body cells, which is also known as a somatic cell, has 23 homologous pairs of chromosomes. And you acquired 23 of these from your mother and 23 from your father for a total of 46. However, sex chromosomes vary slightly. They're not as uniform as the body cells. And they determine whether you are a male or female. So in humans, if you're a human female, you have two X chromosomes, and if you're a human male, you have an X chromosome and a Y chromosome. So here's what's known as a karyotype, a human karyotype. It shows each pair of homologous chromosomes duplicated. So here we have a pair of homologous chromosomes. This would be one chromosome set, and this would be its homologous pair here. This would be the centromere, and these two copies, so they're identical copies of a single chromosome. Again, this is called a chromatid. Um, and this karyotype is from a male, because you can see here that one is an X chromosome and one is a Y chromosome. Humans and most other animals and plants are said to be diploid, also known as 2N, because all their cells contain pairs of homologous chromosomes. So here we have the diploid condition, otherwise known as 2N, you have two sets of chromosomes. And here we have the haploid condition, you just have a single set of chromosomes.
Haploid, again, are just cells that contain one set of chromosomes. Um, the haploid condition in humans, again, is 23. And our sperm and egg cells are haploid, because when they combine, they combine with either a sperm or an egg cell. And that sperm or egg cell also has 23 chromosomes. So when they combine, they make up um, the full complement of chromosomes for a human genotype, which is 46. And diploid, again, cells that contain that complete set of chromosomes, which is two sets, 23 homologous pairs. So all of our body cells, all of our skin cells, liver cells, um, kidney cells, all of those cells, every single cell in our body besides sperm and egg cells are diploid cells. Meiosis is another type of cell division, and it's the process that produces the haploid gametes. Gametes are otherwise known as sex cells, they're sperm and egg cells, and this process occurs in diploid organisms. It makes sexual reproduction possible. Whoops. The life cycle for meiosis is just the sequence of stages leading from adults of one generation to adults of the next generation. And it's separated into two multi-step stages. There's meiosis one, during which homologous chromosomes separate. And then there's meiosis two, during which sister chromatids separate, just as in mitosis. So here we have the meiosis life cycle. Two um, sexually mature adults here. They're multicellular. They're diploid. Um, and by diploid, again, it means they have two sets, or 2n, to make 46 chromosomes. Meiosis occurs during which egg cells and sperm cells are manufactured. So each egg cell and each sperm cell is just going to have 23 chromosomes. When those um, two gametes combine, we have fertilization occurring, and that creates the diploid zygote, 2n equals 46. Mitosis leads to growth and development, which in turn makes um, a sexually mature diploid adult human. Okay, so just as in mitosis, there has to be a, a point in time when chromosomes duplicate. If you don't have chromosome duplication occurring, you're going to end up cutting the number of chromosomes you have in half, and that will not make a complete organism. So here we have a pair of homologous chromosomes in a diploid parent cell. Duplication is going to occur such that each of those chromosomes has an exact copy, and those copies, again, are known as sister chromatids. This occurs during interphase before meiosis. During meiosis 1, the homologous chromosomes separate. So these, the red and the blue, are considered homologous chromosomes. Originally, you can say um, the red chromosome came from your mother, the blue came from your father. They made duplicates of themselves, and then those homologous chromosomes separated. So you have one um, precursor to a sperm or egg cell here that ends up with um, the sister chromatids from your mother, and then you have one precursor cell here that has the sister chromatids um, from the chromosome from your father. Meiosis II occurs, and in meiosis II, the sister chromatids separate. Again, this is the same um, process that occurred during mitosis. So you have one sister chromatid here and one sister chromatid here. Those sister chromatids contain identical genes. And the same would happen for these cells. So crossing over is the exchange of corresponding segments between non-sister chromatids of homologous chromosomes. And it occurs during prophase of meiosis 1. 
this process increases variation in offspring. So this is a visual representation of crossing over. Again, this occurs during prophase one of meiosis. We have the duplicated pair of homologous chromosomes. Um, the chiasma is the site of crossing over, so it's the physical place on that chromosome during which segments are exchanged. So again, these would be considered homologous chromosomes, and each strand is a sister chromatid. Those homologous chromosomes are going to cross over, and some of the genes within this blue chromosome are going to end up on the red chromosome. So during metaphase one, the sister chromatids remain joined at their centromeres. Okay, this is just to compare uh, mitosis and meiosis. And I, I should add here, but um, as you can see, once those um, sister chromatids separate, some of the genes that were originally on um, that red chromosome are going to end up on this blue chromosome. So this just increases the amount of genetic variation that is possible within sperm and egg cells. Okay, um, now I think I'm ready to go ahead and do an overview of how mitosis and meiosis differ. So we have the same parent cell that's going to lead us through the process of mitosis and meiosis. So in this case, during meiosis, or during mitosis, sorry, the, the chromosomes have been duplicated prior to prophase. During metaphase, those chromosomes are going to be aligned. During anaphase, those sister chromatids are pulled apart. And um, once they're pulled apart, they're considered fully fledged chromosomes again. And you are going to end up with the same number of chromosomes that you had in your original parent cell once um, telophase and cytokinesis occur. Okay, let's contrast that with meiosis. Um, during meiosis one, crossing over may occur such that there is some genetic exchange between um, homologous chromosomes. During metaphase one, those homologous pairs are going to align. During anaphase one and telophase one, um, the homologous chromosomes are going to be separated. And during meiosis two, you're gonna have separation of sister chromatids. So what you're going to end up with is not an exact copy of the parent cell like we saw in mitosis, but half the number of chromosomes, and some of those chromosomes may have had crossing over occur, such that there is increased variation in these sex cells. Okay, what happens when mitosis and meiosis go awry? Well, with mitosis, you can have cancer. This is just uncontrolled cellular division. Um, and an example of what can occur when meiosis goes wrong is non-disjunction. And I'll explain both of these in more detail. So unfortunately, um, a lot of us, whether directly or indirectly, through friends or family members, are negatively affected by cancer. It's a common disease, and depending on what type it is and how early or late you catch it, um, it can be fatal. So cancer is a disease of the cell cycle in which a mutation causes cells to divide abnormally. This abnormal cell division creates a tumor. Some tumors are benign, which means that they are not um, harmful, they're not going to be spreading, and they're not going to be interfering with normal functions, and some of these um, tumors are malignant. And I'm going to go ahead and pause here and pick up in the next um, chapter, or the next um, lecture segment.